The folks, uh, you can tell by just looking at him that our mandolin player is a really smart guy. It's really true. And uh, he, he's been doing some research lately, and uh, uh, we, uh, we are, uh, we're, we're, we're very passionate about bluegrass and the history of bluegrass. And uh, there was a, uh, a grant found in an archive in, in New York City that uh, right before 1946, which is the culmination year of when Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs joined Bill Monroe, there was a short, there was a very short period where the, the bluegrass boys had a, had a saxophone in the band. <laughs> and uh, it's true. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't last. The guy was, turned out the guy was an asshole. And, uh, and Bill Monroe let him go. But we're going to bring it back tonight, just for tonight. I mean, it, it, it seems like saxophone fits perfectly in bluegrass if you think about it. And he's an asshole. <laughs> and, and, and Pete, well, ladies and gentlemen, please, please welcome Mr. Pete. What's your last name? No, Pete Wall. I could have remembered that one. We've, uh, we've had a lot of crazy instruments sit in with us. We had a vibraphone once and a, a trombone, but it's the first time we've had a tenor saxophone. That is a tenor. Right on. Take the lamb, just some 
blow my shotgun. Take a little step. Rolling boy. Rolling boy. Choo ba choo. Mr. Pete Wall, my lord. <laughs>